with us on this Friday edition, Ed Schultz News and Commentary. Well, I don't think there's any way Hillary Clinton was damaged by the political attempted takedown by the Republicans yesterday. I, you know what? That might have been the most television I think I've ever watched. I watched the whole thing. I woke up yesterday thinking, all right, the Benghazi hearing's going on. I'll watch a little bit of it. And then I got hooked. And then you know what hooked me? Was the professionalism of Hillary Clinton. She was calm, cool, collected, believable, and she had an answer for everything. And they tried every angle in the book. And you could see that it was a strain on her, but she stood the test of time. So at the end of the day, the chairman, Trey Gowdy, had this comment to reporters afterwards. I, I think some of Jimmy Jordan's questioning, uh, well, when you say new today, I mean, we knew some of that already. We knew about the emails. In terms of her testimony, I don't know that she testified that much differently today than she has the previous time she's testified. So, so, that's an admi- that, so that's an admission that the Republicans didn't get to her. The Republicans did not get the meat on the bone they were looking for yesterday, and that would have been a campaign political takedown to paint Hillary Clinton as someone who simply cannot run this country. And she, they tried to pin it on, number one, security, number two, communication with an ambassador, and number three, this rogue relationship that she has with Sidney Blumenthal, rogue in their mind, pretty normal in the mind of most Americans, as I would say. But it is something that has weighed heavily on the secretary. There was a moment of emotion when she explained what she's been through throughout all of this. You know, I would imagine I've thought more about what happened than all of you put together. I've lost more sleep than all of you put together. I have been racking my brain about what more could have been done or should have been done. What should have been done? How many times have... A leaders of a country look through that, uh, that glass hole and say, gosh, why didn't we do this? You know, the Republicans were trying everything they possibly could yesterday to come up with a new angle, to come up with a fresh approach that would trip up Hillary Clinton. And it just didn't happen. It got to the point of the ridiculous. This congresswoman from Alabama, uh, Martha Roby, asked this. At your home, were you alone? I was alone, yes. The whole night? Well, yes, the whole night. <laughs> well, I don't know why that's funny. I mean, did you have any in-person briefings? It's, I don't find it funny at all. <laughs> I'm sorry, a little note of levity at 7.15. Well, I mean, the, the reason uh, I say it's not funny is because um, it went well into the night uh, when our uh, folks on the ground were still in danger. So I don't think it's funny to ask well, you if you were alone the whole night. Congresswoman, you asked if I had a skiff. I had secure phones. I had other uh, equipment that kept me in touch with the uh, State Department at all times. I did not sleep all night. Um, I was very uh, much focused on what we were doing. So, the congresswoman from Alabama wanted to know if Hillary Clinton was alone all night long. So, could she corroborate what she was doing and how she was doing? That's what that was all about. They were trying every angle they possibly could to take down Hillary Clinton, and it didn't work. It's a huge political loss for the conservatives. A huge political loss. And now the American people will render judgment. Elijah Cummings had these thoughts about the about the accusations that have been placed around this secretary. And, I, and it bothers me when I hear people even imply that you didn't care about your people. That's not right. And then I sit here and I watch you. And I saw how you kind of struggled when you were talking about that night. And I just, for one, want to thank you, and I appreciate what you've done. It has not been easy. You're right. It's easy to sit up here under these lights and Monday morning quarterbacking about what could have been, what should have done. You have laid it out. I think you have said you have. Not, this has not been done perfectly. You wish you could do it another way. And then the statement that you made a few minutes ago when you said, you know, I have given more thought to this than all of you combined. So I don't know what we want from you. 
Do we want to badge you over and over again until you get tired, until we do get the gotcha moment that he's talking about? We're better than that. We are so much better. We are a better country. And we're better than using taxpayer dollars to try to destroy a campaign. That's not what America is all about. The ranking Democrat on that committee, Congressman Elijah Cummings. And what was so telling after that statement, no one on the Republican side countered that one bit. Now, there were three things that unfolded during the hearings yesterday that I thought were pertinent, that it seemed like this was the angle that the uh, Republicans were trying to take. The role of Chris Stevens, the ambassador, it seemed and it was described as almost that of a James Bond role that I got the impression that he went into Libya knowing that there was going to be minimal security. He was going to be going to be the boots on the ground to go into the country and find out what the heck is going on, find out who the good guys are, who the bad guys are, who the United States and allies could count on to get a successful conclusion and don't create too much of a presence. That was the mission, it seemed to me. The other issue was the fog of war. What happened on the night? How did it happen? Who communicated with who? And why weren't certain things done? And I think that that was answered very, very well. Then there's the Sidney Blumenthal connection. There seems to be an incredible fascination about Sidney Blumenthal with these people on the board, that there's no way that Hillary Clinton could have any friends whatsoever that would feed her any information at all about uh, the cost of milk or anything else in the country of Libya. And they made him out to be like he was some kind of special envoy that the White House didn't know anything about, and he was some kind of top-secret agent. For more on this, let's turn to Joe Sestak. Admiral Joe Sestak worked in naval intelligence and is running for Senate in the state of Pennsylvania. Congressman, good to have you with us. Good to be with you, Ed. Thank you. Let's talk about Stephen's role. Um, From the hearings yesterday and the information that came out, what's your take on it? Well, as far as the ambassador, first of all, he's a real hero. And I think it's very indicative of his desire to actually do what you just mentioned. He really did care to understand what's going on, to discern what's happening, and what was a very hot spot for us right there. I mean, this was an extraordinarily important moment because we had intervened here, and Gaddafi was gone, and turbulence was happening. And he wanted, in my opinion, to truly be there understand it, get the first-hand account, and report back. My take is that, um, without a question, this was somebody who was doing, going about his job as we would like people to go about their job, and unfortunately, this tragedy occurred. I'm going to take it a step further, uh, Joe, in that, you know, there's obviously adversaries on the ground. There's enemies on the ground in Libya. There were anti-American interests on the ground. There's a real possibility that someone might have figured out who who Chris Stevens was and targeted him for the attack, knowing that he was out there doing the due diligence of the United States and somewhat of an agent on the ground trying to figure out what was going on. I mean, we don't know, do we? We, 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 we just don't know. Uh, and, and then there were security requests. This seemed to be a real hot topic with, uh, with the uh, Republicans yesterday, the number of requests for security which at the end of the day, it sounds like that's a pretty normal procedure for every one of these embassies around the world. Without a question. Look, it's also what we do in the military. We are always asking for more to make sure that we can do the best. I'll never forget when General Powell, for example, was asked, why did you go into Panama when he did that intervention down there with 20,000 troops? He said, that's all I could get in there in the time I had to do something. Yes, we want the best of the best out there. But the important issue really is the fog of war. And that also goes to intelligence. When I worked in the National Security Council and watched the intelligence flow go to the President of the United States, I remember commenting to somebody, you know, there's no one-armed intelli- uh, 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 intelligence officers because they always seem to say, on the one hand, but on yeah. the other hand, And that fog of war, I'll never forget Admiral Krauss saying, as chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, the first word from those on the ground will almost assuredly be wrong because of the fog of war. 
Admiral, is there anything from your intelligence experience in the Navy of 30 years, is there anything about this that really bothers you from an operational standpoint? Uh, we can Monday morning quarterback anything, but it, it just seems like after 11 hours of watching this yesterday, there there's no there there. We didn't find out anything before that we didn't know before. I have absolutely no problem. And when they had the Accountability Review Board, thought it was absolutely spot on to have transparency, investigations, to find out in that great dictum I learned in the Navy, expect what you inspect. And the inspection to find out, are there lessons learned that we can apply not to have it happen again, is absolutely critical. But I think at this moment, with the seventh or eighth investigation, and the way that the majority leader, uh, McCarthy, said, well, this was something that would take Hillary Clinton down, that this has gone beyond the pale into politics. No, I don't think that anything, as the committee had said when confronted by reporters afterwards, anything new was learned. And as far as what occurred that night, my gosh, there are things we know with better security we might have had. We, there are things that the, rep- that the House and the Senate we did not pass at the request of the Senate Department of Better Security. Fingers should be blamed to everyone that lives were lost. But that said, we have what we lessons we have learned from now, and let's apply them to the future. I think yesterday should close this out for us and we move forward. Okay. So, and finally, uh, Admiral, the politics of all of this. There, uh, Hillary Clinton a winner yesterday? I think Hillary Clinton showed the heft of having been a public servant overseas for the United States that would bode her so well and us Americans as President of the United States of America. She was formidable, as we want the Commander-in-Chief in the White House to be, to have our back. And I think she displayed that yesterday. Joe Sestak, Admiral Joe Sestak running for Senate in Pennsylvania. Let me ask you how your race is going before we let you go here today. How is we, the race in Pennsylvania? We think the ship is headed fair. <laughs> And I just, you got the wind I, at your back, and you're on top of the waves. I like I, it. I head up to ed, I head up to Bloomberg University here shortly after we talk. I'll be talking about education and with proposals from my book, "Walking in Your Shoes to Restore the American Dream: How to Get the Cost of Education Tuition Under Control." And then I'll walk 12 miles to speak at a dinner that evening to the Columbia County uh, Democrats. I am insistent that the greatest thing we can do as public servants is walk in the shoes of those we want to serve. Joe Sestak, always a pleasure. Great to have you with us. Great to be with you. you. Thanks so much. We'll do it again. When we come back, the conservative take on exactly what unfolded yesterday in Washington, how ridiculous it was, and where the conservatives see the opening when it comes to taking down Hillary Clinton. What's their big issue this morning, the day after? Ed Schultz, Susan Commentary, brought to you by Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSave team. We're right back. Hey, folks, you've heard me talk about BioGreen Clean. I'm going to show you right now on my airplane just how tough this is. I want you to keep in mind, chemical-free, 100% plant-derived, biodegradable. It is the safest cleaner that you can get, and it's the most effective. Go to our website, wegotahead.com, or go to BioGreenClean.com, www.B-I-O-G-R-E-E-N-C-L-E-A-N, and order today. It's time to continue our conversation about mechanical insulation. Mechanical insulation is for the piping systems in our nation's commercial and industrial facilities. Facility owners are burning up billions of dollars through the lack of mechanical insulation on these piping systems. Call the iSave team. Insulation saves America valuable energy, and this team of energy conservation specialists is shovel-ready to save you money. Visit iSaveTeam.org to have a specialist give your plant an energy audit. We perpetuate a culture of crime all the way from Wall Street right down to the Main Street in our hometowns. It's worse than it has been since FDR took control of the problem and said we can't count on industry taking care of the American labor. They probably have already engaged in some type of criminal cover-up. And the law prohibits the government from even doing anything about it. Catch America's lawyer Mike Papantonio on YouTube at youtube.com slash TV.
So I think the calculation is, here in Ed Schultz, Susan commentary, that the much-anticipated political takedown of Hillary Clinton just did not happen. Does this politically damage the Republicans in any way, or is there anything gained in any way? Let's get the conservative take. Let's go to Genevieve Wood, who is with the uh, Heritage Foundation. She is a senior fellow in communications. Genevieve, good to have you with us. Good to be on, Ed. All right. Give me some issues that, if from a conservative perspective, that came out of 11 hours of hearings yesterday that we didn't have before. Well, I think what we didn't know before, or maybe I should say what we suspected before that I think was actually confirmed, is that Hillary Clinton did know these attacks in Benghazi specifically were not caused by a video, uh, even though that is what she told the American people. I think that was clear both in the emails that revealed that she sent to her family, uh, an email to the Egyptian prime minister, an email to the Libyan president. So that was new information, not new in terms of what people actually thought probably happened. That's long been suspected, but I think so, those emails confirm that. Okay, so that would categorize Hillary Clinton in conservative terms as a liar to the American people. People. Is that the mission there? I, well, I think the mission was, why did you tell the American people one thing while behind the scenes you were telling other foreign leaders and your own family an entirely different mm-hmm. story? Why so, did you tell uh, the American uh, people that? Well, let me offer this. Uh, um, it, sometimes in the military, it's on a need-to-know basis. And in diplomacy and in world news, until leaders are all on the same page, it's a need-to-know basis. Nothing was hurt by the American people not knowing exactly all the details right away. And the, there was video, and there were thing, demonstrations happening all over the world that were playing into the high emotions of people uh, that were dealing with, with attacks. Uh, well, so why can't, why, I mean, that just seems like such a, a, a thin line that the conservatives are trying to stand on to take down Hillary Clinton. Well, but Ed, I don't think that puts in the exact right light. I mean, we're not talking about just a couple of different stories here. This is a big difference between a video and a ser- and a planned terrorist attack, especially in a country where, you know, prior to that time, things apparently were fine. Uh, Libya was going to be a, a, considered a success story. I mean, let's just keep in mind, uh, while you're saying that the Republicans, what they're doing now is political. I would argue that the fact that we were in September of 2012, uh, which happened to be a, an election year, mm-hmm. coming up in just two months for President Obama, there were some politics going on between the White House and the State Department okay. and how they wanted the public to view okay. this issue. Uh, all right. The, the next thing that jumped at me was this fascination with the friendship between Sidney Blumenthal and <laughs> Hillary Clinton. Uh, you have friends, I have friends. This was pointed out on the panel yesterday. We get emails all the time. Yeah. Uh, it, it seemed like the uh, Republicans on the panel yesterday were trying to make this connection that Sidney Blumenthal was some kind of a special envoy or some kind of secret agent. Uh, yet there were no emails anywhere to, to show that Hillary Clinton was definitely using any information he got as gospel. Well, I, I think there were two things going on. Maybe what you just said, but I think also trying to drive home the point, and I think a couple of lines of questioning went at this, that Sidney Blumenthal had no problem getting direct contact with Hillary Clinton on the issue of Libya, uh, and she was having exchanges back and forth with him on policy and so forth. Fine. I think the issue that was tra- the, the kind of uh, point that was trying to be made is, however, our very own ambassador was not getting that kind of attention. But Genevieve, there was no... And he paid his wife for it. Uh, Okay, well, now, wait a minute now. There was no effort on record showing that Chris Stevens was trying to get a hold of Hillary Clinton, the Secretary of State. But as we now know, he didn't have her personal email, which apparently is how Hillary was mostly conducting business at the time. So, you know, Sidney Blumenthal's got it. Fine. You're right. French should have emails. But the ambassador doesn't have it. He's made six hundred requests that go into her her state department that she's running at the time and those don't get answered and to me ed that's the much bigger problem look is hillary clinton going to go to jail for anything that was said yesterday i don't think so no, point, <laughs> no she's not uh, going and, to jail and, and i'm not and i don't ever suggest think that she probably that i thought she did something that deserved that the question is was she running, doing a good job running so, the State Department? Well, that the, was the, my question. That's what this whole thing is about, is that the conservative movement in this country is trying to paint Hillary Clinton as someone who can't take or won't take the 3 a.m. phone call, who doesn't know what to do in a crisis, who doesn't manage her department very well, who is incompetent and doesn't know what's going on. 
Okay. Well, l- no, no. Listen, I think that may have come out of some of yesterday. I don't think that was the intent. I think the intent was to get to the bottom of why what, were things run like they did, and why did no one pay a price? No one at the State Department to this day lost their job over the fact of what happened in Benghazi. I think most Americans would think that is a <laughs> is more than a shame that something should have been done about that. Okay, uh, so who should, should have, so who's, they should have come clean with the public? Who should lose their job, Admiral Mullen? The secure, national security people? Well, there are probably a number atta- of folks. But when, are- this, when this attack was taking place, everybody was in on the loop. The geography and the logistics made it impossible for the United States to respond. And I think the secretary made the case yesterday that we have diplomats in those kind of situations right now all over the world. Uh, we got 270 uh, uh, embassies or uh, 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 you know facilities around the world that are in countries that aren't all properly guarded. Why isn't that a good enough answer? Because the good because it wasn't just like one day before the attack, Ambassador Stevens asked for additional security. This had been going on for months. So I'm not saying that we had to have you know the the 82nd Airborne over there. This, but this wasn't just about. How did we respond okay. as soon as the, the attack happened? It's what led up to that. Why were we in such a poor position in the first place? I Genevieve, think that's the larger question. What, what about the scope of the questioning? I mean, w- would you admit that there were some irrelevant questions that were asked by the panel yesterday? Well, I'm going to be very honest with you. I did not get to watch all 11 hours. I, I watched about four and a half and then had to read some other accounts of it. Look, sure. I think when you're trying to get to the bottom of something, there may be some questions that aren't considered as pertinent as others. But on, on the whole, I thought the questioning was good. Okay. Genevieve Wood, good to have you with us. Heritage Foundation, thanks Thank for you, your Ed. time. You bet. This is Ed Schultz, News and Commentary. We'll close it out when we come back with another candidate who seems to be thinking he has no chance. Lincoln Chafee pulling out of the race. We'll talk about that. Stay with us. From the steel mills of Pennsylvania to the auto factories of Michigan to the modern makers movement, manufacturing makes our nation great. I'm Scott Paul, president of the Alliance for American Manufacturing. We bring business and labor together to advocate for policies that everyone can agree on. Together, we can strengthen manufacturing and create good-paying American jobs. Help us keep it made in America. The Ed Schultz Internet Broadcast is brought to you by the Ring of Fire Radio Show. Listen to the Ring of Fire weekends on radio stations across the country. Get more information and the news of the day at ringoffireradio.com. Lincoln Chafee out of the race. It's official. So now we're down to three. Hillary Clinton, Bernie Sanders, and Martin O'Malley. This is going to make the debate structure a heck of a lot better. Jim Webb already out thinking about an independent run. It isn't going to happen. And now Lincoln Chafee seeing the light. So we are where we thought we were going to be. And the good news is that there are five debates left. In closing, the attempted political takedown of Hillary Clinton simply did not happen. And if you want to be somewhat cynical about it, the loser yesterday was a guy named Bernie Sanders, and he didn't even do anything wrong. I don't think Hillary Clinton lost one supporter yesterday. I don't think Hillary Clinton had one American out there say, I'm thinking about Hillary, now I'm not. I think she gained a lot yesterday, and I think her composure, her poise, her professionalism, her stress under uh, pressure uh, was class act and an absolute A performance. I don't know where she's hurt in any way, shape, or form. Big day for Hillary. Big day for America. Hopefully, we can put this Benghazi stuff behind us and security will be better moving on. This is Ed Schultz, News and Commentary, brought to you by Communication Workers of America, Alliance for American Manufacturing, BioGreen Clean, and the iSafe team. Have a great weekend.